Today we're looking at a chart that's used in English language teaching. The chart is called the English Sound Color Chart. You can see the title here at the bottom. This chart is used to practice English pronunciation. So each sound is represented by a different color here on the chart. As you can see, the chart is divided into two sections, the top and bottom. The top section above the white line is all of the vowel sounds in English. So each of these color blocks represents a different sound made by a vowel or combination of vowels in English. For example, these first two color blocks in the top left are the a ah and a uh sounds. A, ah, a. Uh. The bottom section below the white line represent all of the consonant sounds in English. So every, every um, sound made by a consonant or combination of consonants is represented by one of these blocks of color. So for example, these first two on the top left in the consonant section are the sounds made by the letters P and the letters T. So they're hard to hear without a vowel attached to them, but they are P, P and Again, very hard to hear without a um, cons or a vowel attached to them, but in the classroom, they would be combined with the vowel sounds. So this chart is used in pronunciation lessons, and specifically it's used with a style of teaching called the silent way. In the silent way, teachers do not give a lot of direct feedback to students. So the goal is for students to be able to hear whether they are correct or not without the teacher telling them. So let's take a look at what using this chart looks like in the classroom. So a, a teacher would introduce their lesson, talk about what this chart is and how they're going to use it. And they might ask students, give me a sound in English. So they would usually start with vowel sounds. So they would say, ah. A student would say, ah. The teacher would not say the sound. The teacher would only point to the color that the sound is represented by. So if the student said ah, the teacher would point to this block of color. The teacher would then point to it and the whole class would say that sound. The teacher would not say the sound. The teacher would just point to it and the students would say the sound. So the teacher would point and students would say, ah. Then the teacher might say, give me another sound. And a student would say, or could say, uh. And then the teacher would point to the color block representing that sound. Then once they have a couple of sounds, the teacher would alternate between them, use different patterns to give students a chance to practice those sounds, listen to themselves, listen to their classmates, and decide whether they are saying the word correctly or not. So for example, the teacher would point only, and they might do it in different patterns. They might go, and then students would have to say, uh, uh, ah. Teacher could go, students would say, ah, uh, ah, 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 uh and so on and so forth, until students feel comfortable with that sound. Usually teachers will start with the vowel sounds because as we saw earlier, the uh, consonant sounds are really hard to hear without a vowel sound, but then they'll start combining them to form short words and eventually longer words. So a teacher might put a short word on the board. So for example, they might write P-A-T, and they might say, what sound, what is this word? And a student could say, pat. So because they already learned the vowel sound, ah, the teacher could then point to the consonant sounds that go with it. So the student would say, pat, and the teacher would point, p, a, t. And the students could repeat, pat. Then the teacher might change it and combine different vowels with those consonants that students now know. So they could do, and students would say, p, uh, t. 
put, put, put. Or the student or the teacher could even do, and it'd be t -a -p tap. So the teacher is not saying anything during this. Students are listening to themselves and listening to others and associating the sounds with these colors on the chart. This can get more complex or stay simple depending on what the teacher and students are ready for. And that is how you use the English color sound chart in English language teaching.